be Jack Denny. Jack Denny, how old are you? Uh, I am 61 years old. I've got these three grandkids. What are their names? I can't remember. Is it Kaylin, Jacob, and Lindsay? Oh, that sounds familiar. That's me. For Jack and Elaine Denny, these were the moments worth living for. Hanging out with their grandkids. you later. That's, Isn't she adorable? She's adorable. Make them all build that new clothes for her, didn't she? Me? Trying to figure out how to use the new video camera. You know, you take that cover off, you can take a lot better pictures. It does, doesn't it? Why are you been trying to take it with the cover on? Just for a second. And enjoying their home, tucked away in the country. I just had to take another picture of this. This is so pretty. The wisteria. It is so pretty. It's raining today. A close-knit family whose lives were forever changed on Christmas Day, 2007. Christmas Eve, I mean, it's one of those marking definitive moments. Our lives before, our lives after. So Christmas Sarah Keener was heading down Iron Post Road on her way to her parents' house on December 25th, 2007. Her husband, Ladney, was driving. They didn't come out to meet us. They always do. The back door to her parents' home was unlocked, which was unusual. I remember what I thought it was like a trash bag on the floor because it was dark. Um, and it was, it was blood. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one that, that sticks with me. Words don't come as easily as the memories do for Jason Chenault when he talks about the Denny murders. If you looked up the definition of innocent victims, it's Jack and Elaine Denny. The Dennys were found shot to death in their home. Dinner was still on the table, dishes in the sink. The peanut brittle Elaine was going to give to her neighbors was on the counter. And her calendar stuck on December 23rd. I remember it just as plain as day. Um, nothing was disturbed. The Denny's home was in the country on a gravel road that few traveled down. The only sign that something was off was a rolled up rug in their otherwise immaculate home. Chanel says it's as if someone came to kill them and didn't leave any evidence behind. Nothing was stolen, no 911 calls, no DNA, no motive, just pictures. Uh, you know, nothing's been easy. Nothing's been easy with this. When it came to investigating leads, the Cherokee County Sheriff's Office checked out any tip, including one that there was a man living in the woods behind the house. They're just different theories like that, that nothing has stuck to the wall. In the 10 years since, Chanel hasn't been able to answer two questions. Who killed Jack and Elaine? And why? When I can walk up and knock on the daughter's door and tell her that we've got someone in jail. That's what keeps me going. I agonize over, it's like, did my mom have to watch my dad die? Did my dad have to watch my mom die? You know, how, how did that happen? There's no moving on for Sarah and Ladney, whose sadness has turned into frustration over the years. Why their parents? Why has no one come forward? You don't just get over it. Um, it's, it's forever. Forever stuck on December 23rd. Forever remembering their unimaginable loss of two parents who loved their quiet home in the country. Here we are at the working property. Each other. I think I had turned away <laughs> with the camera because I thought, what if that flips up and hits the tractor? But then, it, you know, then I got back on it. So we will rewind it and see what it looks like. And their family. Bye. Bye. Bye.